Let's take a look at the Arduino Uno Super Starter Kit by Elegoo. I received a package from Elegoo, kindly provided for review. Comes in this compact case, which is stuffed with parts. Comes with a little card with email contact info in case you have any problems. It also comes with a disc including a PDF tutorial guide, Arduino sketch code, and libraries you may need for the code. And you can also download this from the website. So you could actually check this out before you own the kit and see what kind of things you can do with this. We have all kinds of things in here and there's a legend here to show what each of the components look like and what they're called. So if you're not really familiar with this stuff, you can pull a part out of the kit and look for it here to see what it's called and what you can do with it. Let's take a look at everything in the kit and then do a few projects to see how it all works. Well first we have the Elegoo branded Arduino Uno R3 board. This one's a nice matte black. It has the ATmega328P chip in dip format in a socket so you could take this chip off onto a breadboard or if you somehow damage the chip, you can replace it and get a new bootloader and be up and running again. USB and power jacks. And for the USB interface, it uses the Atmel 16U2 chip. So the Arduino Uno board is the little controller board that all of these things can interface with and run the projects. And to plug in from these sockets to a breadboard, we have a bunch of DuPont wires. We get a USB cable to plug the Arduino into the computer, a 9 volt battery clip with a DC plug so we can power the Arduino from a 9 volt battery if we're not plugged into a computer for power. And included is an Elegoo 9 volt battery so you don't have to go hunting around if you want to use one. We have this shield here that includes a small breadboard. So you could use this little breadboard on its own and it's got sticky tape so you could also attach it right here. This shield has pins that would align with the Arduino Uno so you can plug this in and then do some small breadboard projects and use jumpers or you can solder your own circuit on here including a footprint for a surface mount chip, some through hole chips and individual pads. There's an LED, a reset switch, another switch, another LED. I also noticed on this Arduino, the headers are conveniently labeled up here, as well as on the circuit board itself. So when you're looking at this on the bench, especially if you have a shield docked on it and you can't see what's written on the board, you can still see all the pin names on both sides. So that's very convenient for getting started. We have a bag with different color LEDs, including some RGB LEDs with individual legs to control red, green, and blue with a common terminal. We have a couple of bags with discrete components. We have a tilt switch right here. It has two terminals that form a switch. So if this vibrates or changes position, it's like opening and closing a switch that you can detect. There's active and passive buzzers, push buttons, two NPN transistors, a relay. The relay can be controlled with five volts and it can do 10 amps at 30 volts DC or 250 volts AC. Single pole, double throw. There's a 10K potentiometer, two photoresistors, two rectifier diodes, one thermistor, two ICs, one's a 74HC595 and the other is an L293D, and a stack of resistors. For the two ICs that came with the kit, the 74HC595 is an 8-bit serial in parallel out shift register. So you could use just a couple of pins on the Arduino and control eight outputs from this chip, like turning on LEDs with just a few pins. And you can even cascade more of these chips together if you have more and control even more devices. The L293D has four high current drivers in it. So when you need to control things that you can't control directly from the limited drive capability of the Arduino directly, such as motors and relays, you can hook this chip up to the Arduino and then this chip can power those high current parts. Looking at all of these accessories, we have a DC motor and a propeller. We have a small stepper motor and a ULN 2003 stepper motor driver board. So this plugs directly into the board and then the board plugs into the Arduino. There's a servo motor with some attachments for it. 
there's an LCD, 16 characters by two lines, and it has parallel discrete pin control, so these pins will go to the Arduino, and you can send characters and control commands out. There's an infrared remote control and an infrared receiver, so we can use the receiver to detect when we press buttons with this remote control, and the Arduino can respond. We have an HCSR04 ultrasonic sensor here with control circuitry built in, and just a couple of pins that you would hook up to the Arduino. So this will send out high frequency audio above what we can hear, and listen back for it, and it can detect if there's obstacles, and it can also measure distance based on how long it takes an audio signal out to reflect off of an object and come back in. So you could use this just to measure distance, or you could use it on a robot to help avoid collisions with obstacles. There is a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. So the Arduino can communicate with this sensor and read the temperature and the humidity. We have an analog joystick here. So when you hook this up to the Arduino, you can move the joystick up, down, left, right, any direction. The potentiometer resistances change and you can sense which way you're moving. And there's also a digital push button here. So if you push down on the joystick, you click a button and you can detect button presses as well as joystick movement. We have a single seven segment LED display and a four LED display, so you can do different kinds of numerical readouts. And then in addition to this small breadboard that came with this Arduino shield, we also get this full-sized breadboard, a few more DuPont wires, and a breadboard power supply. On the box it shows what's connected within the breadboard, so you can see what pins are in common. You should be able to do 5,000 insertion and removal of parts, and the leads that you insert can be 20 to 29 gauge. So let's just test if components are going to go in easily or not, because some breadboards really have trouble, but, well, this went in immediately. No problem, no resistance to pressure. Oh yeah, this is a good breadboard, it seems. Sometimes when you get a breadboard and it's a low cost one, when you go to insert a component, you have to fight with it and try to wiggle it into a position that it will get accepted. But on this one, yeah, it's just perfectly fine. With this power supply, you could plug in the nine volt battery, and then you can plug this into the edge of the breadboard, lining up the pins so they go on these rails here on top and bottom. And now on each of these ends, you have a jumper you can change between 5 volts and 3.3 volts on both sides, and then you'll get power ground up here and power ground down here. Then you hook up all of your components to the power rails, and you can just use the 9 volt battery to conveniently power everything. Looking at the tutorial files, there's a tutorial PDF for the Super Starter Kit. The tutorial includes how to get the Arduino up and running, installing the Arduino environment, the drivers that you may need for USB, and once you are all set up and ready to go, there's a code folder which has Arduino sketch code for all the projects. For any project sketches that may need an extra library installed in Arduino, the library zip files are included in the project folder as a reminder, and they're also in this main libraries folder. So the tutorial explains how to get these set up in Arduino. When everything is ready to go, you just come to a certain project folder, make sure you've got the library installed, then you can just open up that project file. Looking at the tutorial PDF, this tutorial is designed for beginners and you'll learn all the basic information, how to use the Arduino and the components, and there's a list of all the pieces included and what they're called, so you can do more research on them, get familiar with them. I thought this was a capacitor at first, but it's actually a tilt switch. So this list is very handy. If you've never seen an analog joystick module, you may not have recognized what this is. So here's how you can identify everything. And the transistors are 2222, general purpose, NPN. Starting at the beginning of the lessons, you learn how to install the Arduino development environment, how to add libraries, how to use a serial monitor so over USB the Arduino can communicate with the computer and you can see text and data. And of course, 
blinking LEDs and the projects get more and more advanced as you go down, eventually controlling a stepper motor with a remote control. So once you go through the first several lessons and make sure you're all set up with the Arduino environment and all the drivers and libraries you need, you start out with a basic lesson on how to use an LED, including what a breadboard is all about, how to hook up the LED, the fact that you need a current limit resistor, how to identify the resistor value based on the color code markings, and getting used to looking at circuit schematics, including these easier to understand wiring diagrams. So let's skip ahead to this ultrasonic sensor module. There's some explanations here on how this works, including how the data signals work. There's a schematic wiring diagram and a more intuitive wiring diagram. So let's build this and just see how it works. We go to lesson 10 for the ultrasonic module in the tutorial files, open up the sketch, and it's very straightforward. So we will want to see the readouts on the serial monitor. So we go to tools in Arduino and serial monitor set for 9600 here. So I'm set for 9600 there. As an example, I tried to upload this sketch, but I don't have the proper library installed for this sensor. So it gave me this error. So I will go to sketch, include library, add zip file. I'll come over to the libraries included with the tutorial and HCSR04 is what I am missing right now. So I will choose this and now it says the library has been added. So I'll try uploading again. And now it's working to upload and it's done. So here's the Elegoo Arduino Uno board. The distance ultrasonic sensor is hooked up as shown in the tutorial. And if I put an obstacle in front of here, I should see differences in distance showing up. So about three centimeters away now. Now I moved away, it's measuring four centimeters, five centimeters. And if I try to measure that distance up to the actual front face of this module, it looks reasonable. I'm about five and a half centimeters right now. Another easy experiment to set up is the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. You can read through the tutorial info. There's three pins to hook up, power, data, and ground. There's some technical specifications here, a connection schematic, and a simple wiring diagram. So five volts and ground go to the sensor, and the data out from the sensor goes to pin two, digital input on the Arduino. And it should look something like this. So in the tutorial code folder, lesson 11 for DHT11, I can load this sketch. And after I upload, I'm getting temperature and humidity readings from the sensor into the serial monitor. This project controls eight LEDs with the 74HC595 shift register. The tutorial describes how shift registers work. There's the wiring diagram. And when the sketch is uploaded, this is the pattern on the LEDs. Using a stepper motor with a remote control, this project uses the infrared receiver and the remote to receive commands to control a stepper motor. This uses the stepper motor, a driver board, the infrared receiver module, the Arduino, the breadboard power supply to give five volts to the stepper driver. And then when the remote control has the volume plus or minus buttons pressed, this module will receive those commands. The Arduino will instruct the motor driver board to rotate one revolution clockwise or counterclockwise powered from the 9 volt battery using this breadboard power supply to convert the 9 volt battery down to 5 volts for the motor. And when that project sketch is opened and uploaded, here's the infrared detector and the remote, the Uno stepper driver controller, the stepper motor, and I taped on a twist tie so we can see it rotating more easily, 9 volts and breadboard power supply. So make sure the power supply switch is on because there's a power light. There it is. So this sketch is only designed to respond to volume plus and volume minus. So we can safely press anything else and we can see that the infrared detector board is receiving the button presses. So if I press volume plus, now the motor is rotating clockwise. And if I press volume minus, it's going counterclockwise. 
That's what comes in the Elegoo Arduino Uno Super Starter Kit. Thanks to Elegoo for providing this kit for review. I'll put links in the description where you can go and see what else Elegoo offers and where you can get this kit. I don't know if I'll ever get all these parts back in the box, but it's more fun to keep them out and play around with them anyway. I hope you have fun learning about Arduino and electronics in general.